Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Josh Ellsworth, and welcome to our Making It Together live educational event. Uh, today is Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern, and we have about an hour of time planned together uh, for today. Hopefully, you've been enjoying our uh, webinars. We've been doing a ton of them. Um, I know I've done, I think, two this week, and then we have this today, and then I have another one tomorrow. So uh, you can see all of those uh, over at the Stalls events page over at stalls.com. So make sure you check out um, all of the opportunities to watch our live education. Uh, one of the reasons I like this educational setting because it's casual and we can take questions throughout and I can talk to you about uh, real stuff. We can do some jobs together and that's just what we're gonna do today. So I'm going to walk you through uh, a job that I'm in the process of completing and my mindset on what product I ordered and why uh, to complete uh, this job, actually two uh, different orders that I had in my little side hustle here. And then also uh, really explore, I think, a somewhat complicated project um, that's a three color design and talk about uh, setting up artwork uh, from cadworkslive.com. And I'm gonna try to create it uh, live on the spot. Well, we have the template, but I'm gonna try to group it and weld it and do all these things live on the spot so I can do a mixed media three color design that combines our new CAD Cut Ultra Weed with Flock. So that's what we have on deck today. And um, good to see everybody this morning. Um, Jim and Mike, good to see you joining from our friends up north in Canada there, Sharon from Cleveland. Good to see you this morning, Marsha. And uh, have a bunch of people just logging on and our numbers are growing here. So um, let's head over to, um, well, let me show you the job first. So you guys know I've been talking a ton about stretch litho mat. I usually show a transfer sheet like this. This is a digital screen printed transfer. The benefit is I can group a lot of different um, unrelated logos up on a particular sheet and number of colors doesn't matter because it's a digital process. And so I had um, two particular orders that I needed to complete uh, for about 50 shirts each. Um, one of those was for a fifth grade graduating class and another one was for a kindergarten graduating class. Um, the fifth grade class had four logos um, in their particular, four logos, four colors and their particular design that they wanted. It wasn't a logo, it was just a made from scratch design. Uh, whereas the kindergarten was just a single color design, uh, like a Vegas gold color going on a navy blue t-shirt. And so I started thinking, um, how could I create this? So let me show you uh, over at Transfer Express just quickly. Uh, up on the header of the website, we're doing a lot of uh, advertising around our senior designs. We're seeing a ton of orders flow through for senior designs. So when you visit transferexpress.com, you can click right on this ad um, right on the home page, and it will drop you into um, it'll drop you into the designer and give you all of the layouts that we've recently created. Some of these are actually customer submitted art, which is awesome. And so you can customize from here uh, within the Easy View Designer and Colorize. So this would be a good example um, of the one that I uh, created for the fifth grade class. And so. Click on the design you like, open it into Easy View. As long as you have an account over at Transfer Express, it will drop you into the uh, designer with the artwork. And at that point, you can change the text, the fonts, the colors to anything uh, that you want and space them out acro across the uh, paper. And so just to kind of give you the spoiler alert, not surprisingly, I ended on Stretch Litho Mat. So here is the design that was this particular design. Uh, for the fifth grade, as you can see, four colors um, in the design. And then the kindergarten design was just like this, single color. I survived kindergarten class of 2020 with the mascot in place of the zeros on the 2020 hashtag quarantine. Um, and then I had some space available, so I made a design for another um, client that I'm going to be uh, working with, with just a single color. So. The reason I wanted to show you this is because I very easily could have ordered that single color design and by the book should have ordered that single color design just in a basic transfer. But because these two jobs were timed together and I needed to do the four color logo, I was already going to be paying for the stretch litho product for the full sheet. So I had this free ride along space if I wanted it. 
And so what I decided to do is just get everything on the same transfer sheet. Um, they were similar quantity orders. So that gave me the opportunity to order and save money. Let me show you the, the exact math on it really quickly. So if you would look at our single color um, screen printed transfer, let me scooch in a little bit here, that was something that was designed through Easy View, like that uh, kindergarten design. So one color to do 50 pieces would cost me about $2.07, so a good price. But for that four color design, I would be paying $6.59, that's for the whole sheet. Now, you could gang them up together, but because of the size of the design, I couldn't fit two on the 11 and a quarter by 14 inch sheet. So rather than paying for two jobs at $8.66, uh, what I did is I went to this stretch litho sheet and I went to the 50 pieces. And again, number of colors in the design doesn't matter. So I was able to secure the entire sheet for $5.70 and go ahead and group up my three logos, which means each logo is gonna cost me um, for the two jobs that I have paid for right now is going to cost me just short of three dollars, two dollars and eighty five cents. And then I get that free other logo that hopefully I can uh, sell to that client. I was going to pay for the sheet anyway. So why not try to fit the design up on there so it would be covered? So I just wanted you to think through that and think about how you can leverage product like digital screen printed transfers to do more jobs through that way because when you can group unrelated logos up in a bunch of different colors regardless of color count you can really group your orders time your orders save a lot of money uh, in the process especially if you think of smart logo sizing when you are selling to make sure you can take up a half a sheet or a quarter of a sheet or whatever the increment is now the other thing i want to point out here is we recently launched stretch litho mat by the image pricing so um, there is a 20 piece minimum on this but if I just had the one job and I wanted this look because of what it's going to or the four color design, I could have very easily ordered that large image and gotten the 50 pieces for $3.15. And so that would have been a savings over the 50 piece quantity in Goof Proof at $6.59. Um, so I wanted you to see that, that you can order exactly what you need or you can do the full sheet and save money. With that in mind, let's over, head over to the heat press and I'm gonna show you how this applies. Because that's what we like to do here is make stuff. And so I have my Hotronics Auto Clam. I have a stack of t-shirts. Um, this particular t-shirt is a 50-50 blend. So it's 50% uh, cotton, 50% polyester, just a basic uh, blank. I think it's the PC55 is the item number. Um, going to split and load it on. Um, yes, you could just lay your t-shirt flat on the heat press. I like to thread it on so I have that open part of the press towards me where I'm doing my layout. I'm not getting under the heat. Um, I'm able to do that because I have my heat press on the caddy stand that we call it. And so a lot of people don't know that those stands are available or the counter stands available. Um, and it's going to save you a ton of time with loading and make it more comfortable for placing. So I'm going to preheat there. And then I've taken the time to go ahead and trim apart these designs if I can find where I stacked them. Here they are. And so we've went ahead and trimmed apart this part of the design and it's a clear carrier. This is stretch litho mat. So it's very easy to just position and see everything that you're doing and then cover it with a cover sheet uh, because stretch litho mat you have to and then complete the heat application. Because there is 50% cotton in this garment, I'm gonna run for the 300 degrees and run it on the top side of the time for 15 seconds. Uh, typically adhesion on cotton um, takes a little hotter temp, takes a little longer time. If this were polyester, I could definitely run it um, down at 275 degrees uh, without an issue. But because there's high cotton content, I'm gonna do it like that. Now, stretch litho mat is a cold peel. So I'm just gonna lay it to the side. And what I would do is I would just keep pressing shirts and working through um, the job here. Now, one of the questions I got the other day in one of my webinars is, why should I consider the dual air fusion heat press, which is an upgrade over this auto clam machine? So if you were doing larger runs for heat printing, which would be somewhere around this 50 piece category, the real benefit of something like a dual air fusion is that once you lock this machine down and I have 15 seconds, really I'm dead here. 
my, my other designs ready to go. So there's no benefit in me grabbing anything. So I'm just waiting. And so a lot of folks will do the dual press. So while the machine is locked down, they will be at the other station, which is directly beside it. And they will be loading their next shirt and placing their next transfer. Um, I also know a lot of shops that have uh, two of these auto clamps side by side and have one operator that's operating both machines. And so if you already have an auto clam in your business, maybe instead of buying a dual press, the right answer is just to uh, buy another auto clam to be able to um, run two machines. Now the consideration for that is, um, of course, if you have two heaters, like two auto clams, you're going to have double uh, the electricity and double the heat in the room. So you also wanna consider that. Uh, whereas with the dual press, um, it's only one heater that moves side to side. Uh, we recommend that you connect it with a 220 volt um, outlet to be able to run it. Um, it's needed so that heater can recover quick enough to move side to side to complete all of your um, applications. But either way, at some point in your heat printing journey, you're gonna want to take a serious look at your downtime. If you listen to my podcast, which is called Heat Press for Profit, um, I did one with Marshall Atkinson, which is a well-known uh, shop coach in the industry that does a great job. And he thought downtime is such an important topic that he has a whole consulting course just on how to kill downtime, I think is what it's called. Um, that's focused on any process, but in heat printing, when you're decorating with the heat press, the two biggest areas of downtime are what are you doing while the press is locked down? Because that's wasted time. And then how long does it take you to press your design at the machine? And so when you're heat printing, really, you want to think about what you're doing while the heat press is down. And then as far as the other piece, what you're doing um, to make alignment easier, um, staging is a big thing. So making sure you have your garments all stacked nicely beside you and easily accessible. So when the press is open, it's not making you money, right? When the press is locked down and engaged, that's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, or the transfer meets the shirt. And the more often we can have that press down, the more money we're gonna make. So a lot of folks will invest in transfers with the clear carrier because it speeds up alignment. They will invest in laser alignment systems because it will make lining up and placing your job easier. They will create cardboard templates or jigs to be able to put on there to speed up that placement. So really the, the toughest thing is um, killing that downtime with placing your graphic and making sure you don't ruin a shirt and get it in the right location. So think about that. I'm not going to make you watch the whole job, but I just wanted you to see a little bit about um, heat printing production and how I would do some things in my garage or my spare bedroom. Um, and then I'd take this whole stack of shirts. I would let them cool down. Um, and then before I bag and box, I'm going to uh, peel the carrier. Now, the one thing I do want to mention um, on Stretch Litho is it's manufactured with a slight clear outline. See if I can show you that. You can see there's a little bit of a clear outline around that design. Sometimes on cotton, when you peel it cold, you're gonna notice um, that slight clear outline around your design. And so here's one that I completed. Um, I decided to load it back onto the press and heat press it again, um, just to blend that clear outline into the shirt more so it's not visible. I mean, if you inspected it close up, you're gonna get it, but from any distance, normal distance, when somebody's looking at your shirt, you're not gonna see it, but if you do see it, it just blends in with the color of the shirt. So that's Stretch Litho Matt. That's a job I gotta complete later tonight, but I wanted you to see a little piece of it so you would understand uh, really how the process works when we're talking about uh, heat applying transfers and ganging up jobs. So I'm gonna take a peek in for questions before we move over to our vinyl project. I'll clean up my space here. All right. So Adam asks, what about uh, lint rolling? I usually stack my shirts before grabbing the top garment. I will roll them to get um, loose fibers. Um, I personally haven't used a lint roller on a shirt um, that I've heat pressed, I don't think ever. Um, I could see a case for that if you're doing 
sublimation, uh, perhaps, or you're doing a transparent clear material on a white shirt and you get lint because then you're going to trap it in and see it. Uh, but for the most part, you know, if there's a piece of fuzz or something, I'll grab it and move it as I'm placing. Um, or you could have a lint roller nearby, but I'm not lint rolling every shirt. I'm just positioning and placing. So I'd be anxious for everybody else to chime in on that. Uh, but I haven't seen a big issue with lint uh, in the heat application process personally. All right. We linked to our heat press for profit uh, podcast. Um, as far as yesterday's webinar, that was delivered through the impressions group. Um, so I will check to see if that's uh, posted or hosted somewhere where you guys can watch it. Um, and then Sharon asked a good question. How do you pre-press with the um, dual air fusion? So a lot of decorators, the reality is they skip the pre-press. Um, when you're dealing with a garment that's higher in synthetic content, like 100% poly or um, a tri-blend, which is usually um, about 30% cotton and the rest is either poly or rayon, um, skipping the preheat is acceptable for durability for most decorators. When you're dealing with 100% cotton, usually what we see is um, each of the control board on each station on that dual press, whether it's in the A station or the B station, can have multiple time settings. So what will actually happen is if I were doing the stretch litho mat, mat application, we would preheat station B, right? To get it ready to position our transfer, the press would come over to station A, I would give it the 15 seconds. Now I'm placing station B. Once this one ends, I'm gonna bring it over here, give it the 15 seconds and, um, and then you just toggle from there. Now, if you are having an issue with timing it up because of the specific application, um, the heat, the air presses have a little secret feature I call the tack mode. You can put it, hit the little thumb tack on the screen and that puts it into the preheat tack mode. Or when it's locked down, you can just hit the two buttons again and it will open it up. So a lot of times I'll use the foot pedal and if I absolutely need to preheat, I will do it that way. All right, so that should cover that question. Uh, let me look back here, see if there's anything else. Good to see you, Craig. Yeah, Brian has the uh, side trays on his caddy stand. So I just use uh, the side trays would be a more efficient way to do it. If you have the space, I just use little, uh, uh, what are they called? Lunch trays, little pop-up lunch tables or lunch trays that I put beside my machine and move all around. Um, and then Frank asks, uh, kind of unrelated, but is a goof proof not recommended as a base layer for foil now that we have the adhesive option? So yeah, Frank, the uh, we've had a lot of decorators have used goof proof successfully as a base layer for foil, but there is inconsistencies. So the transfer, um, the foil transfer, the specific formula that's actually clear is the better solution for that now. It will give you consistency. All right, so I'll come back to, uh, I'll come back to some of the questions uh, that are coming in here and um, good, some good ones coming through. I want to make sure we get uh, detailed into this other project. So I'm going to open up CAD Works, which is our online design software and give you a peek at that. And so um, this particular project that we're going to make together is uh, a three color design that I'm going to try to work from a new template that I saw that either Jenna or Sarah on our team had added uh, to CAD works recently. And so we've been adding a lot under the template section. And so you just get a free um, online access to cadworkslive.com, it's free. Um, and then this allows you to create vector art that can be sent to your vinyl cutter. And they have two sections here. So we have 2020 new, which are new designs that are editable templates, meaning I can change the text and everything about it. Or we have the stock designs, which aren't as easily editable. They're kind of designed to um, be what they are as far as the layout and cut as they are just kind of resized. And so I do want to customize a little bit. So I'm going to pick this Warriors, uh, Waynesburg Warriors design to show you because that seems like a pretty typical uh, sports design that we might do. Um, I will make it larger so we can all look at it. And this design looks great. Um, and we can imagine how we would layer this, but actually making it editable so you can make it say what you want, but then good for production and cutting are two completely separate things. And what I mean by that, at any time down in the bottom right-hand corner of CADWorks, you can click on the wireframe view and you can see that there are a lot of overlapping lines and crisscross lines, which is going to make for um, a little bit of a, a messy process for cutting and weeding. And so this one's kind of interesting because um, I have 
like the black, as I see it, like when I think through this, I have the background layer of the W in black. That's like my first layer down on the shirt. But then I have the red that I would need to press second. But then I have another layer of black on top of the red, which is behind the warrior's text. And then I finally have the white text on top. And so really that would be a lot of steps and a lot of layers of vinyl. So what I want to do is figure out how I can weld the design or knock out the design in such a way that all the black can go down as a as a single layer. So I may mess up as I'm showing this, but I want to uh, walk through the process together and kind of explore this design. First, let's get it to say what we want it to say. And so I'm gonna change the W, let's make it a B. I'm good with the outline size, I'm gonna click OK. And instead of Warriors, let's make it, um, go with Bison, that's what I can think of that starts with a B right now. Um, and, and in CAD works, you can see that all the envelopes, all the contours have already been added for you. But if you want to remove those because you don't want the text to look like this in the, in the design or change anything about it, you can do that. However, I'm pretty good with how the text looks in the design. And uh, we'll go ahead and keep Waynesburg as the, the city name or the town name. So now that I have the text um, how I want it to be, I can you know move it around. I can size it accordingly. I want this to be, let's just make it a little bit smaller on here. And now I can start to work with the design. So one thing I like to do is I like to make a copy of the design just to the side in case I mess anything up. I'm gonna be working with a version of the design, but always have the original uh, beside it that I can always go back to. And um, then we're gonna start to uh, break this down. So it looks like the first thing um, that needs to happen is I really need this um, black layer to punch through the background red layer. So the black layer in Bison needs to punch through uh, just the red layer um, here uh, in, the, in the large B that's present on the screen. So in order to do that, I need to get to just the black layer of Bison as of right now, those are all moving as one piece. And so anytime you want to like separate um, pieces within CAD works, you're gonna go up into uh, shaping and you can either break it apart by colors, which is what I wanna accomplish here, by regions, which would separate the B from the I from the S, or by curves, which would separate the center holes of the B from the outline of the B. So that's the most detailed level to break apart. But I want just colors here because I wanna keep the integrity of the whole design. So once I break it apart by colors, I'm going to grab uh, the red color and I'm just gonna change it to a different color so I can see it when I drag it over here so I don't lose it with the white background. And I'm just gonna leave that park there for, for a second. Um, at this point, I really just wanna punch through the red layer of the B, not the black layer. So again, I'm gonna separate this by colors again, just that element, I'm gonna break apart by colors. And then that will allow me to grab this black background layer, hopefully and get it out of here for a second. I'll piece it all back together in a moment. And I'm gonna move this B uh, to the back again. So I'll just go up to a line and say, move it to the back because I really want to punch this black layer through this red layer. That's the intended result. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna select this foreground. I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard to also select the background and click it. So now I have two objects selected and I should be able to go up to shaping and do back minus front and that creates a punch through effect. So if I move this, um, let me just move this piece. If I move this, you'll see that it's punched through um, all of those areas. Undo to get it back to its original location. So that gives you a concept of uh, punching that through. Now, the next thing I wanna do is if you're following along, I'm gonna bring the background of the B back right? Because that's what's going to give me like clean sections and everything. I'm going to position it back into place. You can do it by eye or you can select the objects and there's some alignment tools to like center multiple objects together. Um, for speed reasons, I'm just going to do it by eye here. So I have that behind where I'd like it in the text, right? And so I'm going to move the red layer away now. And the reason why is because if I show you back to that wireframe view, I don't want this black text to cut like this through each other. So they really needed to be welded together. So it gives me one smooth set of combined uh, cut lines. And so I'll keep it in the wireframe view for a second. And I'm just gonna draw a box. I'm gonna click and drag a box around both black objects that I knew were black that I want to join together. 
and I'm going to go up to shaping. And then I am going to, sorry, where's it at here? Weld. Yeah, I have it covered here. Shaping weld. It's the first command. All right. And so you see how it got rid of those cut lines and that weld is one continuous piece. So we see that a lot when we're working with uh, athletic tails, um, especially. I think I did something wrong, guys. That's why I keep an original. You guys are probably trying to warn me. Let me see. No, it actually looks good. It actually looks good. So I just need to make sure my alignment's up when I put it back. So when I drag this back in, it's, it can get confusing because there's show through here. That black background is gonna show through without adding additional weight to the garment. And I'm still going to get a nice clean line of reading my uh, background text. So I just joined the black layer together. Now there's a little hairline here of red. I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen. That may not weed correctly. Um, so I may lose that detail, but I'm not too concerned with it. I could go in there and clean that up by bringing an object over it and doing that back minus front command to get rid of it and kind of punch it out of the way. Um, but I'm not too worried. I think when I'm weeding that that won't even hold that little thin line of detail anyways. So I'm not going to worry too much. So now I'm going to bring in my bison tax, my foreground. Let me bring it back to the front here. And I'm going to drop that back into my design. And so I haven't resized anything, you notice. So even if it's wrong on the screen, I'm going to have to manually place these and layer at the heat press anyways for this three color design. But you can see now I have the elements um, that I want in my design. I have uh, a full black background layer that'll get cut and go down first. Um, I'm going to pick a different color that I have here. So it's going to actually going to be navy, for example, today. And then I'm going to take the green which is going to be our red today. And that's gonna go down. So let me change these red colors so I don't get confused. Let me just go to our um, Stalls digital color palette. At foreground, I'm gonna do out of like a gold flock today. So change that, the background's gonna be navy. So I'm good with black as my point of reference. And this uh, text is going to be red. So, and that's all gonna go on a a gray shirt for me. So that's my completed design with the correct cut pieces. So once I'm good with that, usually what I would do is I would save this to my login. And that way I have a copy of the original artwork in case I screwed anything up. Um, but I also have the production artwork and I put a little note here under it saying production artwork and whether or not it's to size or, or whatever it may be. Um, let's look at the size, which is way too big. I have it 30 inches by 30 inches. That might be a little big for my shirt. So let's, um, going to press this on a hoodie. It's going to use my 11 by 15 platen. And so let's go ahead and do, let's go with 13 inches for the width and see what that does on the height proportionally. Yeah. So 13 by 13, because I'm going to use an 11 by 15 platen. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that uh, height to be less than 11. So I'm going to make that 10.75 and see what the proportional size is. There we go. That's good. So more like 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Um, at that point, I would save it. But for now, since I'm just going to cut it, I'm going to delete this version. I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to send that over to VectorCut, which is our uh, cut driver that you can download for free on CADWorks to send to most cutters, the GraphTech, the Roland that we sell here at Stalls. It certainly works on. But if you're using a Cricut or Silhouette or some other brand, you can just export the file um, into an appropriate file format for your cutter driver software. So here we go. We're opening it up here. Bring it over to a screen you can see. And one thing I really love about vector cut is it shows me all of the layers. And so I can see I have my black layer, my gold layer, and my red layer all separate uh, together. Let's start with that full background design. Um, one thing I always like to do is mirror them all together just to make sure I can see that everything's mirrored. And then to save on material, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate a little bit. I'll just save me a little bit. And my material width that I have set up because I was cutting sign vinyl the other day for a couple of stickers was 22 inches. My ultra weed is my narrowest material. It's about 14 inches. So let me set my width up to 14 inches. And then for the yellow flock, it's actually 20 inches. So I would change the width to gang that one if I were doing a big run. But in this case, I can fit one across and then um, select my black layer and I'm ready to set up my cutter and send that to cut. So 
Um, with that in mind, let's head over to the cutter. I want to make sure. Want to make sure that you guys are uh, good to go on questions. Am I going to change the bottom word to match the B? Okay, so actually, what I did is bison matches the B, so I did the mascot in the B. I guess I could have done uh, the uh, city name in the letter, but we'll go with what I have here for now. Um, and I think we're good on questions otherwise for right now. So let's take a look over at the cutter. All right, we have our uh, GraphTech CE6000 set up over here. This is the um, hoodie that I'm going to be doing. It's actually um, like a tank top hoodie where the sleeves are cut off. It's from Pennant Sportswear. Um, and so I like the style of this particular item number on this is 8218 uh, and it's the color gray. And so we'll get more details on that over at the heat press in a second. And because we have the Navy layer first, I'm going to grab my roll of Ultra Weed. So Ultra Weed is our new all purpose heat transfer vinyl that's manufactured right here in the USA. We just launched it about a week ago and we love all the feedback that you guys are giving us on it. We're glad you're liking it. Um, it has a low temperature application and it also has a matte finish. Um, I like this product, especially for layering. Um, you're going to find that there's a, an advantage when layering this product that we'll talk about once we get to the heat press. Um, and I'm just plugging in my GraphTech cutter with the USB cable uh, to my laptop here. And now I'm just going to tell the cutter to go find the front edge of that material. And my downforce is at a nine, my speed's at a 25. I'm gonna do a test cut because I can't remember what I cut last on this machine. I think it was the sign vinyl, but let's just test cut and weed it to make sure we're good to go. Give you a bigger view of the screen for a second. Yep, it's good to cut through the material, but not through the carrier, which is our goal. And if you remember, my design didn't take up my full material width, so I'm just going to slide the cut blade a little bit to the left of the test cut and put my point of origin there. And then I can see that I only have 13.3 uh, inches on the width, but that's plenty for the design that we just created. So go over here and click send to cutter. And then the vinyl cutter will cut my design. The GraphTech, this is the CE6000. One of the things I like about it is not only how quiet it is, but more importantly, how it can cut accurately and track longer lengths than other cutters that I've seen on the market. And so um, for a 24 inch professional grade cutter, um, this machine, I mean, I've I've cut entire five yard rolls on the machine, which seems kind of crazy. Usually don't like to do that in case something happens. I don't want to waste it, but I have advanced the material, making sure the space under the cutter is clean and cut entire uh, five yard rolls of material. So this is cut, ready to be weeded. We'll do that here in a second. Let me load my red material so we don't have to change our downforce. This is the bright red color and ultra weed. If you've never vinyl cut before, um, heat transfer vinyl is one of the coolest products out there because just like I'm doing now, you can create garments in, in quantities as little as one uh, very profitably. And so the only part that's going to get you when you're creating super small quantities, it's not really the cost of the material or doing the job. It's more the cost of the design setup. So if you can find a way to streamline design setup, templatize it, make it quick and easy, uh, you can do one-off fulfillment all day. We see a lot of people using these cutters to ma manufacture to order for their Etsy stores or, or wherever they may be selling online. Um, I'm not worried about checking my downforce again because it was already set for this material. There shouldn't be too much change at all, uh, color to color. So what I'm going to do now is grab my red material from the software. Um, I'm going to rotate this one the other way. 
And then I'll just select it and bring it down into the bottom of the material. And go ahead and send that to the cutter as well. You can always order the ultra weed or the flock material that I'm going to be working with today. Uh, Pre-cut from stalls. If you don't want to cut and weed or invest in a vinyl cutter, that's an option. Uh, sometimes you have a vinyl cutter, which I do, but I order a lot already pre-done uh, from stalls when I have a big job because I'm the only person operating in the business. Um, so I don't want to spend a lot of my time cutting and weeding. I value more of my time doing other tasks, but um, this one's cut and ready to weed, which we'll show you. And the last product we're going to load on is the flock material. This is our flock two and the color is it's called yellow. And flock is a little bit thicker. It's one of my favorite special effect products. Uh, of course I like glitter for the sales volumes and metallic. Um, but when I'm thinking of like a product that I would wear and that is kind of premium, uh, the flock is one of those because it has this uh, velvety plush finish. And typically when a customer sees it, they really like it, especially goes really well on uh, fleece or left chest logo. So I'll use it a lot for school spirit to kind of upgrade the look on a fleece like we're going to do here. Um, and I love it for mixed media, especially as the foreground layer. You really don't want to use flock as a background layer. I'm going to just change my um, settings here. I have eight presets in my graph tech, so I'm going to condition number two, which I can also name if I'd like um, as flock, if it's one of the core materials I use in my business. My force is up on a 24, and I know I cut some stuff yesterday out of flock and did some bags for another uh, opportunity. And so I'm just going to, I do want to test cut just to make sure I'm good, but it should be good. Yeah, no problem. So you see, a lot of people think you really need to go crazy on your blade and your blade depth when you're toggling between uh, two different materials. I find that sometimes that's overrated. Um, if you have your blade depth set accordingly, you have a sharp blade and you have your um, you have a good quality cutter, you don't need to do a lot, whole lot of experimentation. Just dial it in, remember what setting it is, keep, keep yourself a guide, and then we're ready to send our gold layer to cut. So take a peek back at the software. Grab my gold layer. I'm gonna rotate this one back the other way. Now this is an example I could fit two up, probably across the 20 inch uh, material, uh, rotated each way potentially, um, but I'm only gonna cut one to do together. I'm just gonna go ahead and send the cut job. And let the machine go to work. So that's just gonna cut, you know what that does by now. So let's take a look over here and do some weeding together while it finishes up the cutting. Because weeding is so fun. And I wanna show you how easy ultra weed is to weed. We named it ultra weed. So we're pretty confident that you're gonna like the weeding experience. Uh, we'll start with the red material. This is a hot peel material. So I could always put this on my heat press to weed it to speed up the times but I want to give you a good view here. So I'm just going to grab the corner. And peel away the excess. So ultra weed has a tacky backing, but you can see we're not getting as much sticking and breaking as you would on other materials with the tacky backing. So I think this product, as I've mentioned on here, if you've seen my sessions and our launch party for it is the product of the future. Um, for you uh, because it simplifies a lot of things. It simplifies the production process from weeding to layering. And it's really going to simplify your inventory position because one material does a lot of different things. When we talk about a product that can apply it as low as 260 degrees on 100% polyester, then there's, you know, I can not only use it for my t-shirts and my fleece like I'm gonna do now, but I can use it on 100% polyester without getting the scorching. So let me grab the other design. This is our navy color. I had a question the other day in a webinar. Actually, I think it was our Ask, Ask the Experts Q&A. 
Uh, the question was to one of our other team members, but they said, why on your videos do you do a lot of direct layering without punching the background design out? Um, this is a case of that where I'm gonna direct layer. So I, I could have created this artwork. So I do something called a uh, reverse weed out of the B, which basically means this whole big chunk of product comes out. So the uh, foreground can layer right in. And for doing that, I would usually do a trapping technique. So it'll take me a little more time in the artwork setup to do that, but it would give me an overall lighter weight product on the garment. But you know, you have to balance, is it worth it? Um, if I were doing this on like a super lightweight t-shirt, could be worth it. Um, but because I'm doing this on a fleece, I think the customer is gonna be totally happy with how, they, how this feels. Uh, flock is going to be on top of it. So you're already gonna have some texture and some weight to it, not in a bad way. Uh, but just in a way that makes it look like a, a premium product. So you need to make that distinction uh, with your customer, but this way is certainly easier to do a complete layer because it's less weeding. And in the application, you have a little bit more of a tolerance for lining up your second layer. So those are done. I'm just gonna sneak over here and cut the flock material off. I'll be right back to you to weed it away. So I'm trying to see the cut lines here. There they are. Grab my weeding tool and weed this. Block is a little bit more difficult to weed than your standard um, HTV products, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that it's miserable by any means. So I don't, I don't think you'll mind working with it. Uh, you should be charging a higher price when flock goes onto your shirt because it is going to cost you slightly more um, and take you slightly more work uh, to be able to weed and complete the design. While I'm working on this, uh, it's tough for me to weed and look at questions. So I'll just keep talking about what I think you may be asking. So, uh, A little piece there that I couldn't get. So the we upgraded our flock. Gosh, it's probably been a year and a half ago. Um, that's why this is called the Flock uh, Two product. And what changed really is I think it got a lot softer. Um, so if you've tried Flock from us in the past, but you haven't tried the Flock Two, I think you'll like how this feels on the garment um, a little bit better um, than than our other flock product. And we've also added a fair amount of colors. So this is the athletic gold, but there's also a nice uh, cream color that I've worked with quite a bit that looks really nice in this uh, sort of natural uh, fiber product. And we have, I think a lemon color as well. So a lighter yellow. So all sorts of different choices. Now, when you start to get into smaller pieces on the flock, that's where, you know, or text, that's where it can break a little bit more and you can have a little bit more complexity and weeding. But all in all, I would say, you know, if a basic design takes you a minute to weed, flock may take you two to three minutes uh, to weed to be able to complete that identical uh, design. So estimate a little bit more on your labor time and cost. But, you know, at the end of it, I did the equation yesterday that said, if we're paying ourselves $15 an hour, which I think is high to weed, to complete that task or to heat apply, um, it's it's only a quarter a minute for easy math. And so when you're saying, how much does it cost me to weed a design that takes me three minutes, it's 75 cents uh, in the labor part. And we know we have about a minute or two in heat application. So I'm almost done with this one. It's the last little piece. And then we'll head over to the heat press and get to the exciting part. clean this up so we have this completely weeded and rather than peeling away the edge I just like to trim it it's a little quicker uh, flock cannot be layered on itself um, so you want to be careful of that you certainly would have to use the trapping effect or the punch out effect if you wanted to do two colors of uh, flock in, in a layered type of look I'm 
and watch out for these little things. You guys have seen I've messed up that in the past. Sometimes you always have a little piece hanging on. So make sure you inspect the print before it heads over to the heat press. And even on some of these corners where there's serifs and different things on the font, sometimes you get a little piece that wants to hang on in a corner. So make sure you inspect the product really good um, on products that tend to tear a little more like flock. All right, so let's get over to the press. I'll lay these out so I can grab them easily. Try to bring you up a little bit closer today. All right, so I have the 16 by 20 platen loaded. Since this is a large shirt, this hoodie may work on this. So let me try it before I swap out the platen. Want to get that print area flat. Um, the seam on this hoodie is all the way down here and it's a 100% cotton. So I'm not worried about that scorching up and, and being an issue on my pressure. Um, again, I sized for the 11 by 15. So should this have been a jam, I definitely could load the 11 by 15 attachment and do the application. Now, when you're combining different materials, you want to pay attention to the application instructions. And so Ultra Weed can press anywhere as low as uh, on cotton, 280 degrees to 300. If this were 100% poly, it could certainly do 260 degrees. Um, and so that's really going to be the easy product to apply. And then I'll have to just pay attention that I get the full application for flock. But in this case, my Ultra Weed is going to go down first position the design and perfectly center this piece. One of the benefits of Ultra Weed is I can just do what's called the two second fast pack. So I'm just going to pack it down for a couple seconds. And actually I need to clean the top of my heat press, but it automatically peeled the carrier for me because uh, it got a little bit of static up there. Um, but that's nice. I have my background layer down, just tack it, peel it. That prevents it from shrinking up. Now, because flock takes a lot of time, I don't want to apply my flock yet until I can get my other layer of ultra weed down. Because if I did the flock first, even though it looks logical, like with how big the design is for fitting it in and piecing it together, that's going to probably cause this background layer to shrink a little bit under that 15 seconds that I need for flock. And then I'm going to have trouble layering this in. So always do your film layers first and anything that's a long dwell that can't be applied with the two second fast tack, do that last. So ultra weed layers nicely. I'm just gonna register it right to this text. I'm gonna give it a two second fast tack. Peel the carrier, nice, quick and easy. And now I'll be able to take my final uh, layer, uh, which is flock, position it over the whole thing. And it hasn't shrunk hardly at all, which makes my registration easy. Flock is a little bit more of a frosted carrier, so you have to pay a little bit of more attention when you're putting it into place. Uh, but it will make nice contact with the garment after it warms up. Just kind of smooth it out, take a look at what you have, and then um, you can cover it with a cover sheet and complete the full application for Flock, which is a cold peel. So I'm going to go ahead and run with the 300 degrees I have the heat press at for the 15 seconds, and then I'll wait till it cools completely down to be able to peel the carrier. And while we're waiting on our final reveal here, I'm going to take a peek at any uh, questions. All right, let's take a peek. All right, lots of questions here. Um, What should I clean the top platen with? So usually I'll try it first with just uh, water and see if that cleans it up. But if you have some goo or something up there that's not removing with uh, water, then I would say a non-abrasive industrial hand cleaner, like a Gojo is a product that's typically used in machine shops and things to get grease off of, um, off of the hands when laundering. As long as it's non-abrasive, that's the key. You don't wanna scratch that platen. Um, our platens are Teflon coated, which makes them really easy to wipe and clean off. I've had mine for five years and it's not looking too bad. I got a couple little nicks in the platen um, where I've probably applied buttons and zippers and different things and scratched it, but that's it. All right. Um, yeah, so the products just to, um, that we're getting ready to reveal as soon as this flock cools down is the first vinyl and the second vinyl down, the navy and the red, were called Ultra Weed. That's the new heat transfer vinyl from Stalls. 
And the, the last one down, the athletic gold is called Flock 2. Again, it's from Stalls, CAD Cut Flock 2. Um, we can link to those in the comments here for you. I'm gonna dig back and take a lot of questions. So Melinda says, more or less, um, is CAD Cut coming up with a new glitter for no roughness, something thin that does not weigh down the material. So right now, I would say our CAD Cut metallic product is the best special effect material that's gonna feel great on the garment and not um, be rough or abrasive. Our glitter flake is has a texture to it. So if you're putting it on a fleece, sometimes if that fleece is not peel resistant, um, the fleece will start to ball up as a lot of people say uh, when it's laundered, if you're not careful. Um, so we know that is there is some opportunity for some development in glitter materials, Melinda. So hopefully that answers your question. And let's just say our pipeline is full of developments that are still coming out in 2020. I think you guys will be excited, so make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, Sharon uses Flock a lot on Ripaway Applique. Uh, it's a great use for Flock or glitter that we just talked about, where you're actually laying a panel of the product down without the carrier, sewing a satin stitch on an embroidery machine, ripping away the excess, and then finishing it with a heat press. It looks really nice. All right. Um, Russ says, do you know when you guys may be offering the CE 7060? Um, soon. I know we have them in stock and so we just have to get it added to our website. I need to get one here to really experience the differences. Uh, but right now we have the CE 6000 plus machines at a phenomenal deal for those that are looking on a, for a deal on a, on a great cutter. The CE 7000, which is the latest from Graph Tech, has a couple advantages. Um, it's a little bit higher price, but uh, we'll be offering it soon. Russ, I would say um, this month would be a good estimate. All right. Um, <laughs> we may have to send somebody to check you out, Patrice. She loves weeding. <laughs> Some people do. I'm not a fan. Um, Jim says, you won't be disappointed. I love my uh, graph tech. Sharon says, I love flock on baby wear. Yeah, so lots of great comments around the graph tech. It is my favorite cutter. The Roland's a close second, but the graph tech's awesome. And here's the problem right? Going through two cheap 24 inch cutters in two years. Cameo has no issues. However, I'm planning to get a CE6000. Go for it, Mike. We can help you out. Um, yeah. And the Cameo machines are nice. So if you're looking for just a desktop machine, uh, I think Cameo just came out with, Silhouette just came out with the Cameo 4. I've heard good things about the machine and actually we're working on getting a couple of those uh, to our studios to be able to uh, give education on as well. Right now we have Jenna that uses the Cricut Maker, I believe. Yeah, it just doesn't cut as fast to Beth's point. Um, good, so this should be cooled down by now. So let me um, peel it here and then I'll give you a look at, at what it looks like. So I'm just, it's a cold peel, so it tends to grip a little more. You're kind of hearing that in the microphone. Um, but we just release it corner to corner is how I'm peeling it. And you don't really have to be delicate with it. And we have our completed result. So we can see um, good registration on the design. We have our three color design, and I know you can't feel this, but I'll try to get you to see it. You can kind of see the texture, at least here, the texture of flock, um, really velvety feel. Um, looks great even as a single color on the garment. You can kind of see how it stands off of the garment a little bit. Um, it just adds so much um, texture and visual interest uh, to design. So it's a great product to sub out. So start to finish, um, just like that. If I had to do it over again, you're right, April, I would have made it be a W instead of a B to match Waynesburg instead of Bison. Maybe went with the navy color across the bottom instead of the flock color. But that's why we experiment and try things out. So pretty um, cool finished design. So feel free to experiment, mix and match products together. I love this ultra weed product, not only for basic stuff, but as a, as a background, as a canvas for layering other special effect materials on top. The other day I did metallic on top of it. I've seen Jenna do glitter. Now we've done flock. And so because of the range of application that can be applied at in the two second fast tack that we call it, it's that perfect product, not only for basic designs, but for uh, layering. And yeah, so this is funny. So it sounds like Josh is changing cutters. Get his old one, Mike Mombi. Yeah, I need to upgrade and I'm gonna buy a uh, 360 IQ cat press, which 
will be uh, we're still taking pre-orders shipping out into August at this point. We do have units shipping in May, uh, but that's probably going to be my next investment uh, for my home shop. I just think that I can generate probably 50 times revenue on that machine a year uh, to be able to apply dimensional designs onto headwear. I don't I think that's pretty unique. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this class. We've been sharing links throughout. Um, we showed two main products today that is CAD cut material. Um, with our new Ultra Weed and Flock 2, and then also Stretch Litho Mat Transfers from Transfer Express. As always, um, feel free to um, ask questions in the comment thread. And just to recap, because I was a little bit confusing on my 360 cat press update, kind of random. Um, yes, if you place a new order for the 360 IQ today, uh, we are out into late July or early August on the waiting list to ship them. However, um, I feel pretty confident that we will start um, shipping units back out to people um, in, in just under a week, which is really exciting. We've all been waiting a long time. Thank you so much for your patience. And we will get to that pre-order list. So over the next 60 days, there's going to be a ton of 360 IQ presses going out. And the good news is we've made it an even better machine. So that's the cliffhanger. Once I get one in the studio here, um, I will show you. But um, the machine is better than it was even uh, when we launched it, we made some a slight adjustment and you guys are going to love it. So thanks so much for watching. If there's more detailed questions, I'll make sure I get to those in the comments thread and we'll see you next time.